very quiet for me in terms of what I'm used to, but also really enjoyable. Went out for some dinner, went to Hawksmoor. That was absolutely lovely. It's one of our premier sort of steakhouses we have here in England or most so London. Um, I think the first restaurant, if I'm not mistaken, is the one that we went to, which was um, Spitfields, which is in Shoreditch. Really nice. Um, kind of the place you'd go to if you'd work in for a company and they want to take you for Christmas dinner or something or a client meeting. It was always something that kind of treated as a, Bit, uh, it was definitely a treat for me right back in the day especially when I was earning like you know pittance there was no kind of possibility of me being able to pay anything in order to kind of be able to afford a meal over there but obviously this year with the success of of this podcast and the success of this channel and the fact that I've taken it more seriously over the last couple of months and obviously me working again and all this sort of stuff has actually allowed me to have a little bit more I would say what do you say disposable income in order to kind of indulge in those things so um that was one of those things I was very look very much looking forward to in order to kind of splurge a bit of cash go a bit crazy eat as much as I want drink as much as I want and not really have any regrets and I've really done the only thing I have a regret about is that it's kind of puffed up my face as you can see via the camera all right I've indulged a little bit too much I've kind of uh, got on the old uh, Brendan Shaw diet when it comes to the eating sort of stuff but now it's the new year I'm going to be a bit more strict going forward but that was really fun I'm not going to lie had a steak fillet yeah fillet steak actually yeah pretty sure I had fillet steak um medium well lovely uh i had the peppercorn sauce that they served there which was brilliant obviously had the macaroni and cheese which they served there which was great um they got a really good salad there also that was really 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 nice really fresh um didn't do any desserts did loads of wine did loads of beer didn't have a cocktail actually regretted not having one of those because their cocktail menu was there's pretty decent too and you know it was a pretty hefty bill but still i was happy that i was able to afford it so again um thank you for everyone that's tuned into the show thank you everyone that's kind of offered any sort of motivation offered any sort of inspiring quotes or said oh that i've done this i've done that whatever definitely all those things have definitely helped to keep me going and if anything they've afforded me the luxury and a possibility many many years after the fact to be able to go back to those kind of places and be able to splurge a bit you know what i mean because I hadn't had that possibility before. That wasn't on my cards. So, I mean, I couldn't splurge. I couldn't be crazy. I had to kind of pick and choose my battles when it came to eating out. Most of the time was spent, you know, having tuna mayo sandwiches at home and shit. You know, you know the vibes. Or egg and cheese sandwiches, whatever. Or melted cheese sandwiches, right? Or chopped cheese, however they call it in the US. Why do they call it chopped cheese sandwiches when the, egg, when the cheese is not chopped? I wonder. If you're American and you know that, please let me know. Because a chopped cheese sandwich is just what we call a, a, a cheese melt, really, right? You just put in a bit of cheese and bread and then you just put in it in a in a George Foreman or, you know, on whatever tabletop you got, right? Um but you're on I me mean, hot surf, whatever that thing is what they use in um bodegas in America, but you're not exactly chopping the cheese. I never understand why it's called a chopped cheese. Maybe because they do chop the cheese. I don't know. I don't think they do, but let me know in the comments. But yeah, so I'm thankful about that. So yeah, the first things first for the new year. I want to start by saying how thankful I am. Thankful for everything that's happened in the last or eight months or so because prior to that i think i mentioned on the show a few times i think some of you guys who've had a bit more of an eagle eye some of you guys and girls will be able to notice if you see some of the videos of myself especially on this podcast especially videos more so because i think my voice i can hide things a lot more but if you see what i actually look like at the at the beginning of january to now it's a huge difference of course my face is still as puffy right because i haven't been as strict as i wanted to be but in terms of my hair my skin my facial hair like i just look completely different i was really going through it the beginning of the year when obviously i was unemployed um you know struggling to find positions to go and you know work in and stuff and coming to the real end and the last end 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 pennies and pounds of my savings that i you know thankfully had something saved up that could allow me to not have to kind of borrow money from friends and family and shit that was really really important for me um i did try unsuccessfully to get some sort of credit card loans and whatnot but they didn't accept me which i'm kind of thankful that didn't happen right so i could just yeah because if i if i did actually get accepted some of those credit card loans and stuff i don't know what i would have done i really don't know i probably would have been in a far worse situation than i'm in now at the moment so i'm thankful that didn't happen and then yeah i just kind of trusted and believed that hopefully over the time i would be able to kind of get over this hump and slowly but surely it's kind of worked do you know what i mean it really has kind of worked out um it doesn't always work out like this, but it did kind of work out for me where, you know, I was able to get a job. I was able to kind of build this podcast and this channel up a little bit more over the last few months. Again, it's not crazy. I'm not Joe Rogan out here, but still it allowed me to have some level of income coming in a second stream, which kind of, if anything, replaced um, some of the stream I was getting from 
DJing, which was helping out a lot, which I didn't really notice at the time when I did when I was employed because again I had two streams of income. I took it from granted, really. Um when I was DJing quite often. But then when the DJing dried up because of the lockdown and maybe because people thought I was shit, I don't know. Who knows what the answer is? But um when that kind of stuff ended, I kind of had to re figure out I had to kind of figure out where my next kind of where that other stream was coming from because that was really important for me because it allowed me to do stuff like this. It allowed me to buy mics and cameras and book space and hours and kind of the studios where I can go and play. It allowed me to do these things that I can't do just solely on my employment stuff. You know what I mean? Because I've got other situations, other circumstances I've got to kind of look after. So having that extra bit of income allowed me to kind of use that money to kind of, you know, get a bit crazy and do certain things about that. Like hopefully there'll be a GoPro coming soon as well that I'm going to be ordering. I know I've talked about that a while, but that's coming. So all those things were only happened or only possible because I had this other stream of income coming in. So, I'm really thankful for that. I'm not going to lie. Like that, that wasn't an easy situation to be in. It wasn't something that I would consider or, or it wasn't a situation that I would kind of give to my worst enemy. Do you know what I mean? That's how bad it was back then. So I'm really thankful that things have gotten so much better of or some somewhat better over the last few months. And I'm just thankful that that is something that I can kind of look back upon and say, oh, I was able to come. I was able to kind of overcome it because at the time, it's dark, man. You know what I mean? Having to sit down and send out a million applications to places and not receive even sometimes acknowledgement. Because it's one thing when you don't get the job, right? I think that's all well and good. You go for it. You try and challenge. You interview. You're down to the last two, last four, last six, whatever. And you don't get it cool. The better man or woman won. But when you send out an application, right? And they clearly say they want people and you don't even get an acknowledgement back. It can be a bit of a brutal blow to the ego, right? It can make you kind of question your life, question your decisions, question where you're going. It can make you question a lot of things. And I think I did question my kind of will to live in that kind of scenario too. Because just like, this is just not worth it. You know what I mean? It's probably causing me more mental damage than good. But again, the unfortunate kind of... um fact of life is that you just have to keep going because sooner rather than later the storm will pass right that is just the truth of life like you can have bad luck after bad luck after bad luck but if you don't stop moving or if you stop moving then your bad luck will feel like it's eternal but if you keep moving your bad luck will eventually run out and you come into some good luck but you, it's just really difficult to keep going that's the thing you don't really get from kind of motivational coaches or you know yeah motivational speakers sorry all those kind of guys those rah rah guys they don't talk about that enough they just say you should get over it but they don't actually get down to the actual brass kind of details of it right in terms of no sometimes you want to keep going but life is just keeps hitting you in the face again and again that sometimes you might think to yourself maybe i am delusional maybe i don't maybe this isn't on the cards for me maybe i should focus on something else maybe this maybe that maybe this but sometimes you know unfairly enough whatever it may be sometimes just being persistent is just the name of the game being able to turn up every single day is the name of the game and i don't know how i did it i really don't i don't think i'm special in any kind of way in that regard but some way shape or form i was able to just you know dig deep and just be able to just turn up every day so i just kept applying every day i kept showing up searching for stuff reading this reading that going over my you know my application rereading my my opening letters i doing whatever i could on my end to kind of make sure that i was doing all the right things or, or i was doing things the right way to give myself the best possible chance to get those positions and then i was hoping later down the line it would change and you know as luck would have it i kept applying and then towards the end i legitimately had what three no i had two solid offers of places so i had basically the opportunity to turn down one place and to go to another place whereas before in the beginning of the year i couldn't even get a reply so i spent eight months not getting any replies right eight months good not getting any headway and then towards the end of the year around what i feel like september-ish around that time suddenly i start getting interviews and suddenly i get two solid offers i have to choose from so that I could sit down and say, okay, let me decide what I want to do. What do I want to commit my future to? What's going to serve me best in terms of my career? What's going to allow me the opportunity to do the things I want to do here on the side? Like all these sort of things. And it's such a blessing. Like, honestly, I'm so thankful of it. And again, it was dark in the beginning of the year. Like I've been there. It was really, really bad. And I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. But again, like I said, unfortunately with life, like the only way you can overcome those things is just to keep going, putting one foot in front of the other. If I would have just kept further solid for myself and not applying for stuff the next day and not getting up and trying and not getting up and trying to kind of go back to a drawing board 
dashboard, read over my emails, see if I made a mistake on spelling, whatever. I, just, I, I did whatever I could. I went over my CV again. I did this. I did that. I changed so many things. And again, I'm not just sure they made any marginal difference, but I think it kind of helped me to kind of understand that, okay, I'm doing everything in my power. I've just got hope that suddenly luck can change because sometimes you could just, there's no science to why you don't get things in life or why you don't achieve your dream. There is none. There is no kind of real hard science to tell you why you are not as big as um i don't know why are you not as famous as some people why you don't have much there's nothing there's no real science to it especially if you're working hard sometimes in life the, the chips just don't fall in your favor but what you can do is just focus on what you are doing you can't focus on what they're doing and how they're there if you just focus on why they're there you just focus on what you're doing the truth of the matter is more often than not a situation or a path will show its way to you it's weird to say it kind of feels woo woo but sometimes that's all it takes but in life you know things are harder than that's all again motivational speakers i'll talk about things are harder than that you've got children you're studying um you're looking after a family member you don't have time to be entrepreneurial and think of dreams you just want to you need money now which is why some of these guys i talk about everyone can be a millionaire sort of thing is bullshit because not everyone wants to be a millionaire some people just want to have a bit of extra coin to be able to go to ib for a couple of times per year or to take their grand to the bingo or whatnot do you know what I mean? people have really modest goals they're not really that super crazy they just want to have some level of comfort some level of flexibility in their finances and you know just an ability to pay their way forward right without having to ask people for money or support and shit that's all they want but you know again these people are just you know these motivational speakers guys are not really speaking to you and i they're mostly speaking to people that actually want to be like them i guess in some regard but anyway that aside like i said i'm just thankful for just being here like legitimately i'm not even stressing too much i think on the way back when i was walking back home and digesting my meal and just looking out in out onto east london i was just thinking to myself wow man i'm just thankful that i have the ability to be able to put myself in a position where i can go and have a meal out somewhere have somebody cook this for me have somebody come and serve it on my table give me a drink ask me if i'm feeling okay i'm just again i don't care where it was it could be a, it could have been a fancy restaurant like the Hawksmoor. it could have been a dive bar somewhere in the middle of whatever i would have just been thankful that i had the ability to afford it that was the ability right to be able to do so is just so such a privilege and i just can't be thankful enough about it especially again considering how badly my year started so that's something i definitely want to just be thankful for outright and then just say i'm just like over the moon that it actually happened and um i'm just yeah i'm just hoping and praying for more better days like that going forward for the rest of you guys if you're in a bad situation um that it gets better um sooner rather than later but again like i said just keep going man keep one foot in front of the other don't give up and hopefully hopefully um things will change for you too hopefully things